Good morning everyone. So this morning we're going to discuss about the types of information or information informational text or all about the factual text. So let me define first what is informational or factual text. Okay, so when we're talking about um, informational text, we are informing readers on a true or it is a fact-based information. So meaning it is real or totoo. So, ito ay uh, totoo. So, this include, this include a wide range of non-fiction. So, ito ay hindi ko gawa-gawa. So, pawang katotohanan lamang. Historical, makasaysayan. Scientific, makaagham. Scientifico o nauukol sa karunungan. So, also, it is included the technical texts, including autobiographies and biographies. So, when we're talking about autobiographies, it is written by him or herself. So, ito yung pagsulat tungkol sa sariling buhay. So, it is the story of the person's life that is written by the person himself. Okay? So, while biographies, it is written by someone else. It is a detailed description of a person's life. Okay, so a person's life that is written by someone else. So that is biography. And uh, also, when we are talking about informational text or factual text, we're talking about books, about history, social studies, science, uh, sciences, and the arts. And then we're discussing about the directions, the different directions, forms and information displayed in the graphs, Okay, like that one, as you can see on the screen. Charts or maps and digital resources on a range of topics. So, for our learning task one, we're going to read the autobiography, the autobiography of President Manuel L. Quezon's, taken from his privileged speech delivered in 1933. Okay, so let me read his Autobiography I was born a poor man, the son of a school teacher in one of the smallest towns in the Philippines, Baler. My father had, besides his salary, a two-hectare rice land which he cultivated. While I was a boy and during my early youth, my father saved as much as he could from his meager salary and from what he could get from his rice field only to have a few hundred pesos with which to give me an education. During those Spanish days, a Filipino, a Filipino family could live in a small town on four pesos a month and a supply of rice. Thus, did my family live for years. When I was at the age of five, an aunt of mine started to teach me to read and write. My own father and mother and the priest of the town later gave me my primary instruction. At the age of nine, I was brought by my father to Manila and began my secondary education at San Juan de la Truan College. First, I lived in the convent of San Francisco serving as a room and mess boy for one priest, receiving no salary except board and room. Then, my father moved me to the house of an aunt where for some pesos, I roomed and boarded. The house was located in Paco, too far from the walled city for him, who could only use his own feet as a means of transportation. My classes started at 7 o'clock in the morning and I had to get up very early to reach my class on time. Again, this impaired my health. And the following year, I was taken by my father to San Juan de Letran as an intern. I remained as an intern until I graduated as AB with the highest honors. By this time, the savings of my father had all been spent on my education. He owed money and simply told me that I had to stop my studies unless I could work my way through university education. I came to Manila and spoke to my Dominican professors who, by this time, 
had become very fond of me and told them of my situation. I wanted to be a lawyer, but could not pay for my expenses. They secured a position for me as one of the helpers in the University of Santo Tomas with room and board and free tuition. Thus, I was able to take up the study of law. So we are then reading with the autobiography of uh, Manuel L. Quezon. So for your uh, learning task number one in your English notebook, you're going to read the this and you're going to answer this also so for the first question are you inspired by his journey in the pursuit of his dream number two what do you think was his purpose in sharing this part of his life to his audience and for number three how did his story affect your personal views about your studies and your dreams and for your learning task number two also you're going to write it in your notebook so you're going to read the statements below and you're going to arrange in sequence those events that taken from Quezon's autobiography. So in your notebook, write A for the first event, B for the second, and so on. Be guided by the language features and signals used in each item. So you're going to read uh, this one, one, two, three, four, and five, and then you're going to write A. If that is the first event that happened to his life, and then B for the second, so on and so forth. Okay, so example this one. So I will give you the um, the first answer. Okay, so when he was at the age of five, his aunt taught him to read and write. That is the first event happened in Kesson's autobiography. Okay, so now let's discuss about the informational or factual text. Okay, so informational or factual text are materials that um, gives information or details about a particular person, place, thing, event, issue, and the like. Okay, so the first uh, type that we have is the sequence. So what is the purpose of the sequence? It describes or presents statements, events, or items in order and enumerates procedures or steps in doing something. For the key structures or the signal questions for you to know that it is sequence, the first is what statements, items, events, or steps are listed? Second, do they happen in this order? Third, do they always happen in this order? And the features or the signal words are the following. First, second, next, then, before, after, finally, following, not long after, now, and soon. Okay, so information using sequence may be presented using the graphic organizers, timeline, steps, and cycle below. Okay, so as you can see, we have this timeline, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, in sequence, we have the steps, and we have the cycle. Okay, next, uh, information or factual text that we have is the description. So, what is the purpose of description? So, describes the person, place, thing, idea, or concept by explaining its features and characteristics or by giving examples. So, the signal questions is what specific topic, person, idea, or thing is being described? How is it described? How does it look like? How does it work? What does it do? And etc. etc. And lastly, what is important to remember about it? And for the signal words, for instance, or for example, such as an example to illustrate and characteristics. Okay, so information using description will be presented using the graphic organizer as you can see. So we have here the topic and then, yeah, okay, so that is a 
That is an example of a description. Now let's proceed to cause and effect. So what is the purpose of cause and effect? Refers to what happened, it is the effect. And why it happened, that is also, of course, the cause. So what are the signal questions being used? What happened? Why did it happen? What caused it to happen? What are the signal words? So, because, since, therefore, if, then, this led to, reason why, as a result, may be due to, effect of, consequently, for this reason. So, information using cause and effect may be presented using the graphic organizers below. So, different causes, one effect. One cause and different effects. Next, the fourth type of uh, information, informational text is the comparison and contrast. So, compare. The purpose of this is to show or present how two or more things are alike and are different. What are the signal questions or the key structures? We have what items or things are being compared, in what ways are they alike, in what ways are they different. And for the signal words, we have the same as, similar, alike, as well as, not only, but also, both, instead of, either, or, on the other hand, different from, as opposed to. So, example of comparison and contrast, none other than Venn diagram. Okay, you're going to compare and contrast. So, for the fifth type of uh, informational text, we have the problem and then the solution. Solution. So, what is the purpose of this? It tells about the problem and the possible solutions to it. What are the key structure or the signal questions? We have this one. What is the problem? Why is this a problem? Is anything being done to try to solve the problem? What can be done to solve the problem? And what are the different signal words? We have the question is, dilemma is, the puzzle is, to solve this, one answer is, one reason for the problem is. So, information using problem and solution will be presented using the graphic organizers below. So, different problem, one solution, different problems, one solution, one problem, and different solutions. Okay, so for your learning task 3, you're going to read and analyze the text below. Complete the table by identifying the types of text, their purposes, and uh, signal words. So you're going to do this in your English notebook. So you're going to read the text, this one. So say for example, all crocodilians or reptiles with long snouts, long tails, four short legs, tough, tough skin, and sharp teeth. Members of the crocodilian family include alligators, crocodiles, caimans, and caviars. So, crocodiles live in warm weather throughout the year and they spend part of their time in the water and part of their time on land. Almost all crocodile, crocodile, crocodilians, I don't know how to pronounce it, crocodilians, grow to be very large with the large, largest more than 20 feet long. There are two kinds of alligators, 14 kinds of crocodiles, 8 kinds of caimans, and one kind of Okay, so you're going to write the types, purposes, signal words. So, uh, another example. So, yeah, so ito yung sagot. This is the answer for that one. So, the type is description because it describes a person, place, thing, idea, or concept by explaining its features and characteristics by giving examples. So, what are the signal words being used? All crocodilians are. Members of the crocodilian family include, so crocodilians live in, there are two kinds, so bonus na yung number one. Now, you're going to do the numbers three, four, and three, four, five, and six. Ah, uh, two, three, four, sorry, this is two, two, three, four, five, 
Okay, so not 3, 4, 5, and 6. So 2, 3, 4, and 5 in your English notebook. So typographical error. So ito yung pagbipilian. So these are the different cho choices you're going to write. So for the types, this is it description, sequence, cause and effect, comparison and contrast, problem and solution. For the purposes, so describes a person's place. So you're going to select. Okay. So pipili lang po kayo riyan. And then, for the signal words, so you're going to, choi, uh, to choose also here. So ito yung mga pagpipilian. And, yan, so yan yung two. You're going to answer the types, purpose, and the signal words. Okay. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, so that's it for our first day. Now for our second day, so all we have to do is to review. So this type of informational text or factual text describes or presents statements, events, or items in order and or enumerates procedures or steps in doing something. So, signal words used are first, second, next, then, before, after, finally, following, not long after, now, and soon. Okay, so, you're going to write it in your notebook. Okay, and then we will check it after. Or in the comment section of our Google Meet. Okay, so, then the second question. Third question it refers to what what it refers to what happened and why it happened so very easy yeah and so four and five so this one for your second day this will be done in your english notebook so learning task four read the text and complete the table below then convert the details of the given text into diagram using the graphic organizer so you're going to read this one this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, in case of emergency, take the life jacket. Okay, so on and so forth. So, babasahin nyo lang po. And then, you're going to answer this one. Again, this will be done in your English notebook. What would be the possible title of the text? The type of text? Purpose? And then, you're going to use the graphic organizer. Second, learning task 5. So, you're going to read this um, given text, Tsunami, all about Tsunami. Okay, and then, what would be the possible title for this one? The type of text, purpose, and then you're going to draw graphic organizers. So, the your graphic organizer may be um, related to the purpose, okay, or the type of text that being used. And for the last one, so, you're going to paste or draw a picture of your favorite place. So, this one is an example. So, this is my favorite place, Mount Mayon, since uh, I came from Bicol region. Okay. So, ito po. So, then write a five sentence paragraph indicating the factual descriptions of your chosen place. So, do this in your notebook, so English notebook again. So, you're going to Paste. Kung wala naman po kayong printer, if you don't have printer, you could draw. Pwede pong mag-drawing and then color it properly. Okay, and then write five paragraph. So, five, five sentence paragraph. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. About your uh, favorite um, place. But see to it that it is factual descriptions or totoo ang nilalaman. Okay, so that's it for this uh, morning. Uh, always study hard and uh, do your work.